resultant velocity vector applications. So here we have a problem. With the help of this question, I'll try to explain you how to draw vector diagrams and how to solve a problem. In most of the videos, you'll find that when I have a question, I already have a vector diagram for you because I don't spend time making it. And then I try to explain you the vector diagram and get you the solution. But here we'll start right from the very beginning as you should normally be doing, right? So the question before us is, a small aircraft is flying on a heading of 330 degrees at a constant speed of 150 kilometers per hour. The wind is blowing on a bearing of 0.85 degrees with a speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Determine the actual speed and direction of the aircraft relative to the ground. So that's the question. Now when you read it for the first time you understand that the directions are bearing angles. They are measured from north clockwise, correct? So let's make, start making our diagram, right? This time for a change. I'm trying to be accurate and neat. So here we have our axis and this is representing north, the line which I've just drawn and now I'll draw east-west and that is my east-west line, correct? Now, so we know by default that north is always in this direction, right? You can of course change the direction of north as per your wish at times for convenience. But in that case, you have to write N in the direction which is pointing north. If you don't write N, this will be assumed, okay? And this is our center O at present. And that is east, right? So we have a plane. So first thing is, read the problem again. And then try to understand the situation. And then sketch it. A small aircraft is flying on a heading of 330 degrees at a constant speed of 150 kilometers per hour. Now to represent it on a vector diagram, a vector has two components, magnitude and direction, right? So magnitude is given as 150 kilometers per hour. That means we need a scale, right? So let's say scale. So a scale for us is 1 centimeter equals to, now the wind speed is 40 kilometers, say 1 centimeter is equal to 50 kilometers per hour. Okay, let that be the scale for us. So in that case, arrow with the length of 3 centimeter will represent 150 kilometers per hour, correct? And the angle is 330. So at present, I'm not using a protector here. And the reason is there. reason is when I have to draw 085, it is going to really coincide with my east. And I won't have any room to write 5 and things like that. So uh, my angles are not accurate, right? So I'll write 085 and make it a bigger one, which will look more like 20 degrees. But that is only to explain you, right? When you draw it, use protector. Make it 5 degrees, right? I'm not doing it because you won't be able to see it in the video. That's the reason, okay? Now, so we'll approximate, doesn't matter, 330 degrees from north. That means if I go in this direction like this, so it is 90, 180, 270, and then 60 more, that gives me 330 degrees. Assume that this is 330 degrees, right? So for this angle, I'll draw my line. And the line of 3 centimeters, right, will give me 150 kilometers per hour speed of the aircraft. So 1, 2, and 3. So that becomes my line, correct? So I'll draw this vector here. That is the direction. And this is 
330 degrees bearing angle. Now this point for me, let me call this center as O for the time being and let this point be P and this arrowhead will represent velocity of the plane VP, correct? That's the vector and the value here is 150 kilometers per hour. I'm not writing kilometers per hour, okay, for the time being. So it represents 150. So that's my first part. The wind is blowing on a bearing of 85 degrees. Now as I said, 85 from here, correct? So let me write, first let me complete this, 330 from here, that means this angle is 30 degrees for me. Is that okay? 30 degrees. So that clockwise is 330. Now, let's go to wind is blowing on a bearing of 085. So, 085, let's take another ink. 085 from here was very close to 90, right? So, anyway, so we'll leave some room. And approximately, my line, I need 40 kilometers an hour, scale is 1 centimeters 50, so it's slightly less than 1 centimeter. So I'll draw a line here, 1 centimeter shy of 1 centimeter. Let us say this is my line, and the arrow here indicates wind, right? Wind velocity. So I'll write this point as W, and the vector, I'll call this as VW, okay? And this angle for me is 85 degrees, right? So I'll write 85 here. That is 85 degrees for me. So I got here both the components. The heading of aircraft and that of the wind, which is at 085 degrees from north, bearing of 085, with a velocity of 40 kilometers per hour. Now, of course, when we have two forces here, then we have a resultant, right? The plane, which is trying to go in this direction, is being pushed by the wind. And so it doesn't really land up this place. It goes right a bit towards east, right? So we'll draw a line parallel to this line here. And the length of this line should be equal to this length, so that we make a parallelogram, correct? So that is our line. I'm just drawing a dotted line here. And then we'll complete the parallelogram, right? A line parallel to represent the velocity of the plane. Correct? So we get our parallelogram. Now in this parallelogram, the resultant of the plane is shown from here to the vertex, correct? So that is the resultant. I'll call this point as R. And the vector from O to R, this vector is my resultant velocity, Vr. Do you see that? In this diagram, we know the sides. 150 representing the velocity of the plane, which is by OP. PR is the wind velocity. And wind velocity is 40. So I'll write 40 here. Correct? Now, once we write that, we need to find what the angle between the two is. How much is this angle? We still need to find this to complete our vector diagram. So the process which we are following is to complete vector diagram. Now we already have length of the sides. In the triangle OPR, we need to find angle OPR. Now how to find angle OPR? That is always a big problem. Now, as you can see, if you see this parallelogram, the angle POW is how much? 
30 plus 85, right? 85 is the wind making angle with the north and 30 degrees is the plane making angle with the north and that is this side of the parallelogram P O W. That angle OPR should be equal to 180 degrees minus angle P O W. Correct? Because these angles in a parallelogram add up to 180, right? Total is 360. In parallelogram, opposite angles are equal, correct? That is how it is. So let's find this angle. It is 180 degrees minus 30 minus 85. I am keeping them separate. Since you can pick them up from the question itself, right? So that is my angle OPR. Let's use calculator. 180 minus 30 minus 85 65 degrees so we get this angle as 65 degrees so that is my angle 65 degrees correct now the triangle OPR is the vector diagram the whole is a vector diagram but OPR is the triangle which will help us to solve this problem. Here the side OP represents the velocity of the aircraft 150 kilometers heading in the direction of 330 degrees. PR represents wind blowing at a bearing of 085 with a speed of 40 kilometers per hour and the angle between them is 65 degrees. The resultant is OR which we need to find. Correct? Now in this triangle if you analyze you'll find that you know two sides of the triangle with included angle. So whenever you have two sides with included angle you can always use cosine law to solve to solve the triangle. Is that okay? Now, using cosine law, we can find the third side. In this case, magnitude of the resultant can be found, which is equal to square root of. We'll put everything in the brackets. So what are the things? Square of both sides we need to add, right? That is 150 square plus 40 square, which we have minus 2 times product of these two sides 150 times 40 it is cosine law times cos of angle in between which is 65 degrees correct and when you square root this you get resultant velocity magnitude right now use calculator once again close the bracket this is important I'm putting the brackets on purpose because here also students can make mistakes. They don't put the brackets and they get a wrong answer. So we have square root, bracket open, 150 square plus 40 square minus 2 times 150 times 40 times cos of 65. The angle should be in degrees. Make sure otherwise you are going to get a wrong answer. Well, that would be a huge mistake, right? So when you do all this, you find approximately this magnitude is 138. Correct? So you can write this as 138. So that becomes the magnitude of the velocity component. When you get your answer, you should kind of check it. Does it make sense? Right? So, so that will give you, yeah, is, I think it does, right, in this given situation. So 138 is the answer we got as the magnitude of the velocity. Now we need to find what is the angle. To find the angle, what should we do? We still have the triangle with us and we can find this angle theta. If we find this angle theta, then we know that the resultant component is making 90 minus theta 
with the north right 90 minus theta with the north so that will be our answer not theta don't write theta after calculation right now let's again consider the triangle OPR so we are working on the triangle OPR so in the triangle OPR now we know all the three sides and we also know one of the angles now when we have a combination of side with opposite angle we can use sign law to get the answer right so the sign law is we want to find theta so we say sine theta over the side opposite to theta which is 40 is equal to sine of 65 divided by side opposite 138 correct now from here what is theta equals to? Theta will be equals to sine inverse of 40 divided by 138 times sine of 65 degrees. So use calculator to find the answer. So we get second function sine, so that gives second function sine, that gives sine inverse within brackets. 40 divided by 138 times sine 65 bracket close equal to so we get an angle of 15.23 okay so that gives us theta of let me write in a different thing it gets mixed up 15.23 so I'll just approximate it to 15 degrees okay so I'm doing a lot of approximation here so we get this theta as 15 degrees. So therefore, we can write our angle from the north. This much angle, correct? Oh, sorry, <laughs> resultant was here. So this much angle. Okay. So how much is that? If this is 15 degrees, then how much is this angle? We know from north, OP was 30 degrees, correct? So when OP was 30 degrees, then this is 30 degrees minus 15. That is one way of writing it. Okay? 30 degrees minus 15, right? The other way of writing this is you could write the bearing angle. So we are giving two ways of writing. So one is, so let me write this in two ways right here. One, bearing angle. So bearing angle will be, now we have found this to be 13, right? Oh, sorry, 15. So theta for us is 15. We know theta, which is shown here, is 15 degrees, right? So if I have to give the bearing angle, then from here, north clockwise, earlier, VP was 30, 30 plus 15. Do you see that? So we can say the bearing angle is 330 plus 15. So that is one answer, correct? 345. So we can say bearing angle of 345 degrees. Do you understand? So that is the correct answer for the given question since we are always talking about bearing angle. But let me also say that we could also write this answer as so it is 15 degrees of north, right? So we could also write this as from north, 15 degrees west. That is another way using quadrant bearing angles. So that is using quadrant bearing angles. And this is using the bearing angles. Default bearing angle is measured from north clockwise, correct? So we got our answer and that is the velocity is 138 and the units are kilometers per hour. And the direction is at a bearing of 345 degrees. So that is the answer, correct? So we'll write down here the answer is 138 kilometers per hour. And bearing is 345 degrees, correct? So that becomes our answer to the given question. I hope you understand and appreciate how we approached it.